Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations and happy new moon in Aries to you. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. If you're new here, hello. My name is Eric. It is wonderful, wonderful to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So before we go any further, <clears throat> usual disclaimer. If you were expecting me to say new moon in Taurus, then what you need to know is that here on Divine Conversations, we practice true sidereal astrology, which in which things shift around a little bit. Yeah. So um, if you're interested in understanding what that means, just go ahead and Google true sidereal astrology. Uh, there is also a website that I would love to direct you to. It's called Mastering the Zodiac. And there you can get a whole rundown as to what true sidereal astrology means. Now, I will say that some people or many people say that sidereal astrology and Vedic astrology are one in the same, or they confuse the two, but I will say that they are not the same. True sidereal astrology is not the same as Vedic astrology. And the big point there is that Vedic astrology incorporates all kinds of Hindu culture and belief systems and all of that into their form of astrology, whereas true sidereal astrology really just takes into account the axis of the planet, how it has shifted on its axis. It incorporates Ophiuchus, the 13th sign, and it has the uh, constellations listed in terms of their true size. Not all, not all of the constellations, well, the constellations are not all 30 degrees, yeah? But that's just a basic rundown. If you would like more information on, in terms of what true sidereal astrology is and how it is incorporated, check out masteringthezodiac.com, yeah? So let's get into this, you guys. Um, I'm going to talk about this new moon in Aries, which is really a, a pretty big time for us, okay? Or at least it can be a, a really powerful moment for you, for us as a collective, but also for you as an individual to propel yourself forward in the new life that we are all, we all have the opportunities to create for ourselves at this time. So why don't I just go right ahead and switch our view over to the chart. I'm going to show you guys the chart. And as, and as you have the chart in front of you, I am going to read through the notes that I have here and the channeled messages that I have for the collective in terms of this new moon phase. Uh, this new moon is going to be on Saturday, uh, Saturday, April 30th. Yes. Um, and as I talk through all of this, I am going to be pulling cards from the tarot. I do have the golden art, uh, the golden universal tarot here for us. Yeah. So let's go ahead and look at what the chart has for us. Here in front of you, you have the chart for the true sidereal system in terms of the placements for the new moon in Aries. As you can see, this will be happening on uh, Saturday, April 30th of 2022. And the actual uh, new moon phase or the, the exact placement of the new moon will be happening around 5.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, this also is a partial solar eclipse. Depending on where you are on the planet, you will be able to see this. I believe it's the it's certain areas of the southern hemisphere hemisphere. I believe Southern America that's going to be able to see this the most. If you are in the northern hemisphere, you won't be able to see this partial solar eclipse. But that is something cool to keep in mind. Yeah. So. This new moon is in fact going to be in Aries and this new moon comes with the opportunity as an opportunity or with the opportunity to help us as individuals and a collective move forward or come for full circle in terms of a process of reworking our identities which has been influenced by Uranus's transit through Aries. 
Now, if you've been following me here on the channel for long enough, you guys have been hearing me talk about, probably are thinking I'm a little bit of a broken record here in terms of Uranus's transit through Aries. Uranus has been stationed in Aries for quite some time now. Um, and spe specifically, Uranus made a retrograde motion last year, which it does six months out of the year. It does this every year. So it's nothing crazy, uh, but it started this retrograde motion in late August of 2021 and ended his retrograde motion sometime in January of 2022. And I, I believe that's correct. Anyway, uh, but this retrograde motion of Uranus through Aries has had a pretty extreme effect on many of us in the collective, and it has caused us and influenced us to go through a re-identification process of really learning about who it is we truly are at the core of our being, putting us through some pretty intense situations in order to get us to see deeper truths about ourselves and to clear away superfluous aspects of our lives that really hold us back or have been holding us back from being who we truly are and expressing who we truly are. At this point, uh, Uranus is direct, is moving direct. Uranus is going to go retrograde again in uh, late August, I believe, of 2022, of this year, or in sometime into September. Um, it does this six months out of the year, so this is no big deal. But for now, we're dealing with the direct motion of Uranus. And once Uranus started to go direct this year, it really put us in a position to be able to act on this sense of change within our identity. And I did shuffle the tarot deck here a few times in preparing for uh, the, this reading, this collective discussion. And ironically enough, the Eight of Cups <laughs> is at the bottom of the deck. Okay, and that's interesting because, and uh, that's really interesting. I'm going to explain to you why. Oh, wow. Underneath the Eight of Cups is the lovers. Let's explain why this is so important, why these two cards are actually so important for the collective. So this new moon in Aries uh, kind of has two parts to it. Okay, there is a release part or phase and then there is also a planning part or phase okay and so a new moon is a really good time for both of these energies uh it's a great time to really go through any sort of releasing process that you need to go through anything you want to let go of it's also a really great time in terms of <laughs> as you're that well there's confirmation right there with my phone going off but as you're releasing it also gives you an opportunity to plan your next steps in terms of, uh, excuse me guys, so sorry about that, uh, to plan your next steps in terms of how it is you wanna move forward, maybe even directly related to what it is you are or have been releasing, okay? Now, I like to use uh, analogies in the form of gardening, okay? Planting seeds and doing taking the steps to allow them to grow. I'm a big gardener. I love growing my own herb garden here. Um, but I find this to be a really effective analogy to use. And what you can do as a gardener is garden by the phases of the moon. And this is where the title for our session stems from. That title being enriching your new sense of self. Because during a new moon phase is a really excellent time for you to fertilize your garden because all of the uh, liquids or saps from your plants are concentrated in the root system, okay? So you really want to focus on feeding that root system and thus enriching the life of your plant because the greater your root system, the healthier and bigger and more longevitous if that's an actual word, your plant will be. And this plant that we're referring to here is the plant of the self, yes? So there is a strong internalized focus for the collective with this new moon in Aries, uh, which, makes person, which makes perfect sense. The new moon is in fact in Aries, and Aries is the sign of the self, of the identity, even of the ego, okay? Um, and so meditation would be a really 
powerful thing to work through or work with at this time. Specifically, meditating on the self, going within and internalizing this energy and really helping yourself come to a much deeper understanding of who it is you are at this moment and what it is you want to be moving forward towards, what it is you desire to be moving forward towards, what it is you are being influenced to move forward towards, take action towards, or how you it is you want to express yourself in a new way at this time from this place of a sense of a new identity, a reshaped identity, a reworked identity, a new understanding of your identity. There may be a need for solitude during this new moon, or at least, the very least, spending time with those most closest to you. As I was channeling the energies for this new moon for the collective, I was definitely getting a distinct sense of not wanting to be in some sort of crowd. I was not getting a party atmosphere from this new moon. Um, and maybe, maybe for some of us, this is actually, yeah, this is um, something that the universe is bringing forward for us. It's a, a bit of advice here. Um, you, you probably don't want to be spending too much time in wild and crazy, crazy atmospheres. If you really want to take advantage of the power to release and plan for your, your days, your months, your years ahead, uh, during this new moon phase, okay? So um, in this time period in which you would, be th I'm sorry, this is a time period in which you would benefit greatly from meditating on who you are now versus who you were about a year ago. That specifically was coming out here. Um, and that's mainly because of the fact that, uh, of what the sun is going to be doing soon, but I'll get into that in, uh, in a moment. Um, uh, so, uh, or a year ago or so, and how you and or your path may have changed. For some of us here in the collective, that path may have been or is changing drastically, okay? So there is absolutely a level of needing to understand or really fully needing to ground yourself in this new, because as I'm even talking about this right now, this this may actually be a tower moment for some, or there may be a lot of people that are gonna be going through a tower moment uh, in the near future, okay? So those of us that are here watching this reading, listening to this information right now, you have a little bit of an edge. You little have a little bit of an upper hand. I didn't even think about this as I was channeling, but this is something that's coming through live in the moment. A lot of people have been resisting this change. And actually, this is making me think of a meme that I saw on Facebook a few days ago about how we're at a time period or we're at a point in human evolution where those individuals that have chosen to remain asleep, you're just going to have to let them stay there because there's no way to wake them up now in time for the changes that are going to happen. And quite frankly, they've chosen to stay comfortably asleep. So like everybody's got free will. You can't make this choice for them. So it's really not about trying to wake anybody up anymore. Now it's really about the time. Now is the time to like really hunker down and get ready for the <laughs> for the chaos, for the madness that's about to ensue with all of these drastic changes that are going to be coming forward in our lives during the next few years. I'm hearing. So, okay. <laughs> so, um Another thing that came through for the collective here, and this is where we enter into the release aspect of this new moon, which is why the Eight of Cups and the Lovers is so important and why it's so serendipitous that after I was doing my pre-shuffle and collecting the energies before I started recording here, it's so serendipitous that these two cards are at the bottom of the deck, the Eight of Cups to the Lovers, because we have an opportunity here to really release and let go. I mean, it's a new moon. This is a perfect time for it anyway, but specifically, we have the opportunity to release and let go of anything of our choosing. We get to choose here. That is the big thing about this Aries energy. Aries is the sign of the self. Aries is also represented in the Tarot by the Emperor. The Emperor represents an energy of being the master of your own domain, being the executive, the CEO of your own life. Only you get to choose, really, 
I mean, unless you give your power away, but only really you are the one that can choose which direction to go in in your life. And now is the time to harness that power and take this opportunity. So ceremonies um, concerning or involving, I don't even know what I wrote there. What is that, Eric? Honoring, aha, that's the word. Ceremonies honoring the death of the old you or old situations would be really powerful at this time. Anything that honors the release of the old is, uh, uh, of the old, as the, anything that honors the release of the old will really help you to prepare for the new, okay? As I was channeling through this, I was picking up on anybody or anyone that would really is feeling influenced or guided to, or really enjoys any sort of ceremonies or rituals that honor the passing. Like I, I was literally seeing a funeral ceremony, that type of situation, because there really is, there really is a death that's happening here uh, for the collective, but that is all in terms of, in purpose of serving the new, making space for the new. This is that transformative energy. You can't have the new coming into your life if you've got the old still stuck up in there, okay? Now, if you direct your attention to the chart here, this was a really interesting aspect for me um, as I was channeling through this because I noticed that Pluto, keeper of the underworld, right, who also rules Scorpio, Pluto is reversed, or excuse me, is retrograde in this at this moment. Okay, what we have here is the exact moment of the of the conjunct of I'm sorry, yes, of the conjunction between the sun and the moon, which does make a new moon. But Pluto is retrograde in Sagittarius right now. And as I was channeling through this energy and specifically channeling through the release aspect of this of this uh, new moon, I felt and picked up that Pluto being retrograde at this time is aiding you in the release of that which is dead and or dying and calling that which may have been haunting you back to the underworld. Like I was literally getting an energy of feeling Pluto pulling specters and ghosts of the past or the remnants of the past, the energies, spirits of the past, whatever has been dying out for you. Pluto being retrograde at this time is literally pulling it back, helping you to release this by pulling it out of your system or giving you an opportunity to allow him to pull it out of your system during this retrograde here, okay? We have the Seven of Cups and the Knight of Swords that has just come out here in terms of that. So any any sort of confusion, any anything that you've been confused about, anything that you have been unable to release, and it may be multiple energies, okay, with that Seven of Cups, but here you have the opportunity to really fight to allow this to be released from yourself. Anything that you have, yeah, anything that you have had trouble releasing from your ego, specifically with this happening in Aries, uh, this actually the new moon being in Aries, from your ego or your sense of self may be easily swept away as at this time. Yep, with the Eight of Wands <laughs> at the bottom of the deck. Okay, the Eight of Wands representing clear and open pathways, having no more obstructions or no boundaries or anything stopping you, anything gearing, getting in your way, anything clouding your vision, anything keeping you from keeping your eyes on the target and focusing on the target to begin with, right? All of that will be easily or has the potential to be easily swept away at this time as this is all aiding in the transformation of self and the transformation coming full circle once the sun goes conjunct with Uranus on May 5th. So this is that thing. Okay, that uh, that I wanted to speak on in terms of what the sun is doing. That's what's helping provide this energy of a new sense of self, a new personal identity coming full circle. In many cases, what I'm hearing for the collective is coming online, okay? Now that we've gone through the transformative process of Uranus having gone retrograde last year into this year, okay, and once it went direct, starting to um, fill out some of the spaces, starting to take action 
towards the new, kind of getting our footing, kind of coming out of that fog or the haze of the reshaping, recreation process, the death and rebirth process, well, really the death process and the learning process that Uranus retrograde was providing to us, okay? Coming out of that haze, once he went direct and kind of starting to get our footing, kind of starting to get the ball rolling in terms of expressing this new sense of identity, well, once the sun moves forward, progresses through Aries, and goes conjunct with Uranus on the 5th of May, that's when things are really going to come full circle. And that's when... Um, I feel like we're really going to be able to hit the ground running or gain more momentum in terms of taking action in terms of this new sense of self. While I will say I do feel like a lot of us have already been taking some action in that way. Yes. Now, this is where the second phase or the second aspect of this new moon in Aries comes into play, and that's the planning phase. So as you know, the, the, the new moon happens or is direct or is um, full in, on the 30th of April, and then by the 5th of May, which is six days later, you will have the conjunction of the sun and Uranus. And understand, guys, energies are fluid, okay? So you will be feeling the effects of these energies more than just when the situation is, like, exact, right? Okay, but their second aspect of this new moon in Aries is the planning aspect. How do you want to move forward in and or with this new sense of identity? Like I said just a few moments ago, some of us already have an idea of how we want to do this or at least an idea of, how, of what direction we want to move in. Now is the time to start putting that plan into action. You have the seven of wands with justice that has just come out here. So this planning phase is also about asserting yourself, holding your high ground, keeping your position, not backing down, okay? And I, I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but this is kind of making me think of this. The, the other aspect of these planetary energies that are kind of helping drive the collective forward in this new sense of self is, in fact, the uh, North Node being in Aries, as you can see here. Now, the North Node, as of the, uh, the moment of the new moon, the North Node is at Towards the end of Aries, it says here that it's at 20 degrees of Aries, which is, as you can see, right kind of on the cusp of Aries and Taurus, okay? We'll get into the energies of Taurus too, because I'm going to talk about that in a few moments. But there is definitely a drive, a collective drive. Now, what are the North and South nodes? The North node is the new direction in your life, is the direction in your life that you're meant to be taking and expressing in this moment, in this lifetime. It is the the, the lessons that you're meant to be learning uh, surrounding the energies that this involves or wherever the placement involves and is the direction that you're meant to be moving in. The South Node is the past. It's what you're coming out of. It's what you've experienced in the past and you have mastered, we'll say, in the past. You could see the South Node as a level of comfort zone energies because it's what you're familiar with. The North Node represents the frontier that you are now moving forward within and are exploring, learning from, experiencing, and learning from. If you look, the North Node is in Aries. The South Node is in Libra justice, which represents Libran energy. There is a level here of needing to stand your ground. Okay. Again, this was something that I did channel at the very end of my channeling, but I'll talk about it here since this is coming out at this time. Collectively, with the North Node being in Aries, we are being guided, even pushed into this level of greater sense, a greater self-identity, a greater sense of understanding ourselves and understanding our identities and who it is we truly are. And that's why this Uranus transit may have been, Uranus transit through Aries really may have been so extreme for us because there was a level of coming out of our comfort zone in terms of keeping the peace 
with the south node being in Libra. Libra is a very peaceful energy, is a very balanced energy. Often Librans get caught up in trying to keep the peace or satisfy everyone around them just because that's naturally who they are, naturally what they do. Libra also represents or rules the seventh house which can be seen as a, a house of law and order, but also is seen as a house of your interpersonal relationships and social activity, at least one of the houses of that, right? Well, there is definitely a, a collective energy of needing to come out of this energy of keeping the peace and instead needing to assert ourselves in some new and bold and different ways. Seven of Wands and Justice with an overall energy at the bottom of the deck of the Wheel of Fortune. Yo, guys, there is big change happening here because this now this this need or desire to assert ourselves in this new and expansive way could create some ego battles could create some rough and tumble situations. That's okay. This is all a natural part of the process. We are learning to, uh, to assert a greater sense of true authenticity and coming out of a time period of kind of coalescing or conforming in order to reach a sense of normalcy or balance or peaceful activity. Now we are learning to be peaceful, be balanced, be and, and coalesce as individual as a collective, but also in the terms of th doing this through a greater sense of authenticity and identity. Okay. So this is definitely going to create, I was picking up on this is definitely going to create some ego battles, some ego clashes. Again, this is all part of the process, but it's really just about pulling on what it is we've learned in the past south node in Libra, what it is we learned in the past in terms of our techniques of compassion, understanding, and keeping the peace with each other, and finding ways to get along with each other, finding ways to communicate with each other effectively, and moving forward together in a balanced and harmonized way, while also incorporating this new sense of self. So yes, there's going to be some natural clashes that happen here. It's really more about how do you approach that situation? How do you not react to, but respond to a new level of needing to assert yourself in a different way? Yes? Excuse me. Excellent, guys. Okay, let's move forward here. So how do we want to move forward is really the planning phase of this new moon. So in terms, and this is another reason why meditation and a certain level of solitude is really going to be helpful for you during this time. Um, you may want to stay home on Saturday, clean house or do your rituals and then have a little fun with some closest friends on Sunday. I don't know. That's just a suggestion. All right. But use this time of needing to be solitary and needing to, or feeling the desire to really meditate both on what it is you're releasing and honoring that, doing your ceremonies or your conscious going, being consciously aware of that in terms of however you would would greatly resonate for you in that way. And then also using that time to start to plan ahead. How do I want to move forward? What do I want to move forward with? Yes. Now, the other thing, the, there's some, there's some serious aspects that are helping with this, that are helping you with moving forward. The main one is a square between Mercury and Saturn. And the name of the game in terms of this square between Mercury and Saturn, now it's not necessarily a, an exact square, but it's definitely showing up on our aspect chart here at the bottom left of your screen, okay? You have Saturn here. I'm sorry, you guys, you probably can't see my, my, um, my mouse, but you have Saturn on the left, Mercury on the on the top right, and in and, and you pull down to the square that where they meet, and you have this square here, this red square. You can also see this square if you go back to the chart at the very center of the wheel. You see this red square here. Follow that red line. Up here is Mercury. Down here is Saturn. Now, the name of the game with this Mercury square Saturn is practicality okay now what is a square a square is a, is an energetic aspect in which you are faced with an issue or maybe even a blockage or a challenge i'd say you're faced with a challenge in which 
your typical mode of handling that challenge or overcoming that challenge is not applicable. You've got to find a new way over this hurdle. And again, the name of the game here is practicality. Why? Because Mercury is in Taurus and Saturn is in Capricorn, two Earth signs. Okay. Capricorn or Saturn in Capricorn. I did talk about that briefly earlier in the year. There was a moment where the sun went conjunct with Capricorn. I'm sorry, with, uh, with, um, Saturn, the sun went conjunct with Cap with Saturn in Capricorn. And that was kind of helping us to build a framework or scaffolding in terms of the new energies, the new sense of identity, the new process that we were building or going through at that time. That was earlier in the year. Now that energy is still kind of there. That scaffolding, that structure is still kind of there. And now with Mercury being in Taurus, Mercury being the sign of the intellect and communication with this square here you are being asked to develop a practical way forward okay we're being influenced to think practically in terms of how we want to move forward with this new sense of identity. Now, I was picking up specifically that some people may have some trouble with this aspect. Um, <laughs> I'm hearing Sagittarius specifically. I was trying to pick out which ones. Maybe some fire sign. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. Um, maybe it's the air signs. I don't know. I, I don't want to be too specific on that. Um, you know who you are if you're having difficulty with this type of energy, with this need for practicality. But please do not panic. Okay. Allow the universe to guide you. Go with the flow. Understand that you don't have to have all of the answers here, okay? The trick is to remain grounded and remain practicality oriented. So any sort of issue, any sort of um, blockage, uh, hurdle or challenge that you come up against, again, you don't have to have all the answers. Let the universe guide you, but remain in a practical and grounded frame of mind. That will really help you get through or overcome these challenges, okay? And you definitely need to remain long-term focused, okay? Mercury in Taurus is not is all about long term, all about thinking long term, all about planning for the long term. Taurus is a fixed sign. Taurus is one of the slowest moving signs in the deck. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's an Earth sign. It's a fixed sign, man. Homeboy, homegirl is slow as molasses. All right, but that is a good thing, or at least that can be used to your advantage. Advantage. There is absolutely a long term goal here or a long-term mindset in terms of planning how to enact or how to uh, put forth this new energy, move forward with this new energy that you're uh, in terms of your identity and your sense of drive and focus. There are no hard and fast methods or ways to achieving your goals. Okay. So remain practical, remain grounded and remain oriented towards the long term. Now, also aiding in the manifestation of your new into the physical is a conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. They will be exactly conjunct at the moment of this new moon where the sun, and this is interesting, the sun and the moon are at eight degrees of Aries, Venus and Jupiter are at eight degrees of Pisces. Now, Venus does rule Taurus, okay? And Jupiter is in its original home sign of Pisces. Now, technically at this moment in the evolution of astrology, Jupiter actually does rule Sagittarius. Originally, Jupiter ruled both Sagittarius and Pisces, but now Neptune, since it's been discovered, has been attributed to or attributed as the ruler of Pisces, which 
Neptune is in, in its home sign of Pisces as well. But Jupiter still has a bit of an affinity or a, a little bit of an affiliation with Pisces. So in this aspect here, whatever it is you are trying to give birth to, because Venus also does kind of represent the Empress energy in the Tarot, whatever it is you're trying to give birth to, whatever it is you're trying to increase the value of, for some of us here, we're working on a new job, a new career path. We're manifesting a new job, a new career path. The magician and the eight of pentacles just came out. Whatever it is you're working on manifesting, whatever it is you're putting your time and your attention and your effort, your consistent uh, uh, effort into, this conjunction between Jupiter and Venus will expand your the energies, the, the, the creative potential, the nurturing empress energies of Venus who also rules Taurus where Mercury is. Okay. So this is a really opportune and auspicious time for you to make some good plans and get some real good energy underneath it. Okay. Jupiter is a benevolent energy, is an expansive energy. It wants to expand anything it comes into contact with. So this could be a really great time to get some real excellent plans of action into place. We do have the six of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. This is a beautiful time to get any sort of business opportunities or business ideas planned off the ground, really come up with some really amazing ideas in how to do this. Yes. Anything else for the magician and the eight of pentacles, please spirit. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, this is, this might be a slightly confusing message, but I kind of get it. So bear with me for a second. We have the magician and the eight of pentacles here. Okay. Uh, and I wanted to get some more messages for that. And I was, and this is specifically in terms of putting your plans of action into place, or maybe even creating a better plan of action, a more fine-tuned plan of action, which is going to be helped by, uh, you know, the square between Mercury and Pluto, but also the conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. Uh, to clarify that, or a, a, an extended or extra message here, is the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. Now, it might seem counterintuitive that it's the Seven of Pentacles in reverse, um, because the first thing that I got with the seven of pentacles in reverse or the seven of pentacles can be a little bit of a planning energy, a little bit, um, a little bit, but really what the seven of pentacles in reverse here is representing is, you know, exactly how it is you want to move forward. Or in other cases, you have a general understanding of what it is you don't want anymore. Like you don't have to be sitting here taking stock of your situation and trying to figure out exactly how you want to move forward. At this point, we know what it is we want, what is working for us and what it is that we, what is not working for us. Overall energy is the two of wands. And what I'm getting with that is you know what direction you want to move in. Yeah, the two of wands to the eight of wands to the sun to the justice to chariot to the chariot. Yes. So some of us might be kind of procrastinating or, um, oh, excuse me, procrastinating or uh, dragging our feet. Okay. You understand what it is you want. You've made the decision. You know how it is to move forward, If there, how it is you want to move forward. If there is still planning involved, which we are talking about here in some cases, the planning is now how to move forward with what it is you've chosen. Or <laughs> I just heard for some of you in terms of what it is that has chosen you. Ah, okay. Alrighty, guys. Yeah. So get with it. Don't hold back any longer. It's time to really put your effort into the new uh, for your life. Yes. Okay, guys, moving forward here now. Um, oh, okay. I spoke about that. Oh, that's it. Actually. Yeah, that's it. That's all that I have for my notes here. Okay. Excellent. Let me see. Let's just get, uh, let's get some more messages here. Any more Final closing messages from the universe, God, source, creator, from spirit. I'm actually, I'm going to move to the uh, Moonology deck. 
at this time, yes? I'm gonna give this five shuffles here. Closing messages for the collective. One. Closing messages for the collective, please sit. Two. Three. Four. Closing messages for the collective, please sit. In terms of this new moon in Aries and five. All right. <laughs> Full moon in Virgo. You are good enough. Is it, didn't this come out for the last one? For the last, uh, for the full moon in Virgo? <laughs> That's really awesome. At the bottom of the deck. Wow. At the bottom of the deck, you have, you're very close to achieving your goal, gibbous moon and full moon in Aquarius. Show the world the real you. And that is exactly, exactly what we have been talking about here, you guys. Okay. You're very close to achieving your goal. Show the world the real you, this transit of Uranus through Aries. Now, to close out this reading, I actually want to get some, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about this, uh, this energy of you are good enough because this is something that is a card that came out last time for the full moon in Virgo earlier in the month. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, earlier in the month of April. Um, but I'm going to get some clarification on this since it came out again. Let's see. I'm just going to give this three shuffles here. Okay. Ten of Wands and Eight of Pentacles just is at, is just coming out now. Um, you guys, you have to allow yourself to let go of some of the burdens that you've been carrying that are keeping you from truly putting in your time, attention, and effort into what it is you really want to be working on. You no longer have to carry the burdens of someone else's desire for you. Last chuckle. Just some clarity, please, spirit. In terms of you are good enough here, yeah, the 10 of wands is still at the bottom of the deck. So we're still collectively, some of us in the collective are still carrying some burdens from the past that we need to allow ourselves to release, okay? You don't have to be carrying these this bird, this burgens, this burgens, this, this burden, these burdens and this baggage any longer. All right. I am going to take this 10 of wands out and allow it to be a bit of a significator, but some clarity, please, sir, on you are good enough. Overall energy is death, transformation. Transformation time is here. Okay, Queen of Cups. Okay, you do have, okay. Give me, I'm sorry guys. Ooh, ooh, wee. Okay, okay. So some serious Scorpio energy going on here. You have the death card at the bottom of the deck. And then I was guided to split the deck. This The deck had split at a certain place. So I just picked it up and picked it, put it on the side. Wow. And uh, it's the king of cups to the world. The King of Cups represents Scorpio energy. The world can also represent Scorpio energy in terms of its fixed nature. But maybe you're a Scorpio, okay? But it's but this is a collective reading, okay? So this is really more about the transformation, the trans the, the, the transformative process or the transformation that Scorpio represents, death and rebirth, okay? At the bottom of the deck, officially, wow, you guys, coming back full circle, we have death. Underneath death is the 
strength card underneath strength is the eight of cups. I mean, there's your answer right there. You've got to have the strength to walk away from that which no longer serves you and walk towards that which is the beautiful new or next steps for you. Underneath that eight of cups is the sun. Whatever it is you're being guided to walk away from, whatever it is you're being guided to leave behind in terms of this situation, this circumstance, whatever opportunity you have to release or whatever you have to uh, to release, okay, let me say this again. You have the opportunity to release something from your life during this new moon. Take it seriously. Allow it to happen, okay? Allow, uh, no, please know that you are good enough. You are good enough to honor yourself enough to allow yourself to release these burdens, okay? Now, what you also have here are the king, oh, I'm sorry, the queen of cups, right? The counterpart to the king, Okay, but in order to take the action that the King of Cups is representing here, which is take doing something that you know you need to do or you know is right, but is not always the easiest, yes? And closing out a cycle so that you can step into the next. Well, in order to do that, you're going to have to understand your feelings. You're going to have to understand your emotions, what it is you truly want, Queen of Cups, and release the internal struggle and or release the drama with other people, arguing with other people, listening to their side solely and not listening to your own. You have to allow yourself to go through the grieving process. Five of cups of, of, of losing or releasing what no longer serves you. Okay. Now you also have here Oh, I'm sorry. Allowing yourself to go through the, pre the grieving process to release whatever needs to be released so that you can take the first steps towards your new direction. Page of Pentacles. Okay. You will be rewarded for this. Okay. Now you also have justice with the three of cups. And here we have the five of cups in which three of those cups are spilled out. Whatever is spilling out of your life, whatever is being released from your life, regardless to what this is, for some of us here, this absolutely does represent some sort of social energy. But regardless of what it is, it's justified. So you really don't have to worry about it. Just focus on what is right for you. Focus on what is best for you in this Aries energy, okay? what is in alignment with your greater sense of self and just move forward with it. Don't waste your time trying to argue or maybe even trying to explain yourself. You don't need to explain yourself to anyone. Of course, you know, be respectful. Say, hey, you know, don't just like cut and run. Don't just ghost people. But if, but if it starts to get like, you're getting into an argument or this, that, and the third. Well, oh, actually, there goes a sense of those ego battles. Look, do what it is you got to do, man. If this is in greater alignment with who you truly are and what it is you truly want out of life, if this is in greater alignment to how or with how Uranus has been influencing you to gain a deeper sense, a stronger sense of yourself, I'm hearing authority, personal power, identity, then by all means, do it and stop arguing with people. Aries doesn't have the time, the attention, the or the energy or the patience to argue with anyone. Aries is just going to do what Aries is going to do. And if you have trouble with that, maybe say as like a Piscean or a Libran, maybe a Virgo, I don't know. I'm just throwing shit out there. But if you have trouble with that, Pull on that Aries energy. We're going to be in Aries. The sun's going to be in Aries until... Hmm, the sun's going to be in Aries until... May 13th. So really use this time, okay, to pull on that sense of assertiveness. Yes? There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Happy new moon to you. I wish you all the best in your endeavors, in your new life, in your new sense of identity. Yeah? Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. But with that, I am sending you so much love, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading and our next conversation very, very soon. Yes? 
Take care. Bye.